Good morning, afternoon and evening. It's time for some coffee today. And we're going to start it off with my Sonic Classic mug. Oh yeah. So guys, so the Sega Mega Drive, or known by many of you like the Sega Genesis, I have fond memories of this product. But not only the memories, but also I like I really enjoy playing it nowadays. So the Sega Mega Drive or the Genesis number one was the system that I wanted to have for Christmas. And yep, I got it and I was so excited. But the funny thing is like a lot of people around me did own a Sega Mega Drive or a Genesis. But they didn't have the same model like me. There basically were two games I got for Christmas and the first one was Sonic the Hedgehog. And Sonic the Hedgehog was a game I wanted to have so bad because this game was freaking awesome. I've seen it with my older nephew and I played it for some time and that was the thing. That was the marketing of Sega. Sell the stuff to the old kids and eventually the other ones like me. I was younger. will see these games. I wanted to have it. But that was not the only game because it came bundled with, yep, the all famous Beefcake Dudes becoming Wolfies. I must say that I do like Alternate Beast. It was pretty damn awesome because you could play together co-op with a friend, but this thing was freaking hard. Like this game was so difficult. And I must say, like, this was not one of my favorite games. I can remember like a lot of people who came over wanted to play this game because it looks so badass. But we are just ending up playing some Sonic because Sonic was so convenient. Like it was super easy to do, and everybody can learn it. You just need to jump and collect the rings. But yeah, so despite all the things. I still wanted to have this thing in my collection after all of those years because the beefcake dudes becoming wolfy are freaking awesome. But let me know in the comments which games did you own? One, two, three, whatever. Let me know in the comments which one did you have back in the day. Okay, so we're going to talk about the Sega Mega Drive 2, or better said, the Sega CD 2. But the reason I wanted to talk about this bad boy, I must say that I am not the biggest fan of this thing. And the reason why is very simple. The Mega Drive number 2 is an awesome piece of technology, but this thing had some pros and cons to it. So first of all, I didn't like the feel of it. I do like design. But the audio quality, for the people who didn't know, is absolutely worse than the original Mega Drive. This thing had like this real nice 60 mid, like the real audio that we had with the Sega. And with some of the games, it sounds kind of weird or sound kind of bad, to be honest. <laughs> but in this video, I want to take a close look at the Sega CD number two. And the reason why in 2022, I think it's a very affordable way to play some Sega CD games. But I know like Sega CD is in general quite expensive, but that's what you're going to get with these unique pieces of hardware. And the reason I wanted to review it in 2022 is very simple. Not because of this thing is always sticky and it won't do freaking close. Now the thing is like, it's quite affordable and here, in my country, I can find these things everywhere. Okay, so it was possible, or it's still possible, to get yourself a Sega Mega Drive 1 on a Sega CD number 2. And of course, we need to have this plastic fantastic over here to support the system itself, otherwise it look kind of weird. But still, I don't know what you think about it, but I think this combination is freaking hideous. Because the designs of both systems are completely different. Yeah, and there are still a lot of people selling it like this. It is a better combination, especially if you like the audio of the Sega Mega Drive 1. Especially when it comes to the stereo quality and stuff like that. So it is an option, but in my opinion, not the best one. So I briefly want to get back to the Mega Drive number one. And the reason is quite simple. So this is for me like the real power. Like this is how this thing needs to be looking. It's, it's so awesome. But there are some problems with this thing. And that is something you need to take consideration when you're going to get yourself a Mega CD or Sega CD number one. First of all, finding a working one is going to be the biggest challenge. And you need to find one that the laser isn't broken or better said like some of these things have like bad capacitors over time because these things are getting really old. So a lot of things you need to consider if you want to get yourself a Sega CD number one. Yeah and not even to start about the pricing. Depends where you're living, the US, Japan or in the Europe zone. Like here in Europe these things are like super rare and they are super expensive. And mainly the reason is very simple because the Sega CD I'm guessing it will be sold much more over here because they were like also cheaper. Okay, so that brings us back to the Mega City number two edition. And the reason why, because this thing can be found everywhere. Like, I found this thing even sooner than the Mega City number one. And of course, most of the time they don't sell the CD unit, they just sell it as a kit. I don't mind it because these, like say, Sega CD two units are like really cheap. But I like it, man. The way how this looks. I'm not a big fan of the Mega Drive 2 because of the sound stuff. But still, this thing is pretty damn awesome. So despite of the Mega CD 1 and 2, the flaws and the pros and the cons, 
Let's talk about the game itself, because here we're going to get some things that you really need to know. By the way, I love this game. So part of the games are basically a joke to me. Like, to be honest, like most games are not even worth picking up. But there are some things you need to know. But when you're looking at the Mega CD, in my case, everything is freaking expensive. Final Fight CD, I'm not even going to talk about how much I paid for it. It's way too much, in my opinion. But if you need to pay like 50 freaking euro here, that's almost like the original price back in the day. But when you're looking at the games and when you think about it, like some of the games are just worth picking up. But how about the other games? I'm just gonna be honest, like some of them I don't even like. I have them in the collection, but I don't know even won't well know why this is. So first of all, the Road Avenger. This is a great example. This is like where the Mega CD or the Sega CD failed. And the reason why, because this is like, in my opinion, just a movie that you're watching and you need to press a certain key function to get or better said like progressing into the stages and this is also the case with a lot of these games cobra command oh boy like there were a lot of weird games on this and i must say that cobra command is a game that i personally didn't like at all like again why did i pick it up it's very simple this game i picked it up because i just wanted to get the lot that i picked up but another game I did like was Soul Feast. It's an amazing game, it's an old school shoot 'em up and stuff like that, that makes it worth in my opinion. But again, like it depends how much you love the Sega and the CD unit. So a lot of games I personally don't like and there are not a few of them like maybe I really like. And don't even go, start about games like Snatcher. They're amazing, but like absolutely crazy expensive. Okay guys, so how does the Mega CD number two work? It's quite simple. It works like you need to put in the disc and just press the start button. If you have seen my previous video with the Sega CD one, we need to press the reset button, otherwise we couldn't open it up the disc tray. That's not necessary because we have a different system here. So, okay, the first game we're going to try out is Soul Feast. I just wanted to show you this awesome shmup. A game that's absolutely worth picking up when you're having a Sega CD. I still need to loop my freaking button over here so it doesn't get stuck anymore. Okay. Ready to go, it's checking the disc. Okay, so I'm pressing the start button, it boots up, and if you don't do anything for, I think it's in 30 seconds or something like that, it automatically boots up. Sega! Okay, it depends what kind of game we're playing. Some have an intro. I think they were like the extra add-ons that we're going to get with the Sega City add-on. Alright, so let's start the game and as you can see here that the music on this game is absolutely crazy awesome. And basically that was more like the Sega CD was the next generation. I know they did some minor tweaks here and there with some of the games. But I think the audio was one of the key features of this device. Okay, so next up, let's try Final Fight CD. This is absolutely my number one game for the Sega CD in general. So I will show you why that is. Okay, so when it comes to Final Fight, I love Final Fight, I love beat em ups, but the music makes this game epic. I can just listen to the soundtrack all freaking day. And all including the game soundtracks are freaking awesome. So fun fact, like I'm a big Street of Rage fan. I didn't play Final Fight back the day a lot because I didn't own a Super NES. And when I was getting older, I did get myself a Super NES, but I never got the game Final Fight. So it's quite interesting that they did release this game eventually on the Sega CD. With a freaking epic soundtracks. Okay, so next up, of course, Sega CD. Sega CD, I must say that I was quite disappointed the first time I played it. And the reason why is because I expecting a Sonic 4. And for me, this was like a step back. Basically, it felt like a Sonic 1, only with some awesome soundtracks. But in the end, I started to loving it. They ported this freaking game to every single platform, even your Android phone. And I completely understand because this game, this game is just freaking awesome. Hey, hey. 
So if people got this game back in today, the Sega Classic Arcade Collection, I must say that I think they would be like very disappointed because there were like freaking five games that we already have seen before. And I can say this is a great example like how bad some of these things were. Not of the games because the games are freaking awesome, but just like how they messed it up. I will get into Street of Rage and show you what I mean. Okay, so let's boot up Street of Rage number one. I love this game, man. But the thing is like, it's absolutely just the same game like the original. Like nothing has been changed out, no freaking awesome audio. So you're playing the same game, only from a disc. And that's kind of lazy if you ask me. Oh, and for the people wondering why everything is so freaking slow, it's because it's the PAL system. Yep, we needed to live back in the day with this. But when you're looking at the Sega CD number two, I think it's an affordable way to play some Sega CD. And the reason why I'm saying affordable, because in my country over here, we can find these things very often and they are like half the price of a Sega CD one. And then what I understand of some fellow collectors I talk with, like they owned a couple of these systems and I understand that Sega CD two has a better later and in the long term, you can have like more fun with it because Sega CD one has some issues when it comes to quality and stuff like that. But that's maybe we're going to talk about in a different video. Well, thank you for watching. Consider subscribing, hit that little bell, become one of the Wicked family, and I will see you in the next video.